Our next fallacy is called appeal to tradition. Now, if you've ever moved to a new job or a new neighborhood or a new school and asked why they do things a particular way, and the reason they give you is because we've always done it that way, that's an appeal to tradition. Now, traditions can be good. We often think of traditions as customs or particular ways we celebrate things. Many families have holiday traditions, for example, that they enjoy and that make the individuals feel like part of the family. Having a birthday cake on your birthday and blowing out candles is a tradition, for example, that many people in our society observe. But when people don't consider doing anything different simply because there's an established way in place, that becomes a fallacy. Suppose, for example, it's grandma's birthday, but she doesn't like cake. Well, you could do something different to celebrate, take her out for ice cream or just sing the birthday song without a treat, for example. It's a fallacy when people rigidly cling to the tradition and cl claim that it is the right way because it has always been done this way. For example, going along with our birthday cake premise, someone might say, well, it's grandma's birthday, so the right thing for her to do is to have a cake, whether she likes it or not. So that would be a fallacy. Just because something has always been done a certain way doesn't mean that's how it has to be done. There's a story that's been around for a while about someone making a pot roast. Maybe you've heard it. One version goes like this. One day, a young girl noticed that her mom was cutting off the ends of a pot roast before putting it in the oven to cook for dinner. She had seen her mom do this many times before, but had never asked her why. So this time she asked, and her mom replied, Well, it's what my mom always did. So the young girl called her grandmother on the phone and said, Grandma, why do you cut the ends off the pot roast before cooking it? Her grandmother replied, that's just the way my mom always cooked it. So the girl called her great-grandmother and asked her the same question. Why did you cut the ends of the pot roast off before cooking it? Her great-grandmother said, I had a very small oven and the pot roast didn't fit in the oven unless I cut the ends off. This is an example of a tradition being carried out for no good reason. As far as we know, it didn't make the roast cook better, it didn't make the meat juicier, or anything like that. One woman did it to make her roast fit in her oven, and then two successive generations did it because she did, and they didn't question why. In this case, tradition became a distraction from the real facts about cooking a roast. The moral of the story is, if you hear an appeal to tradition as a reason for doing something a particular way, make sure it's a tradition worth keeping. The last fallacy we will talk about in this module is called the genetic fallacy. The genetic fallacy claims that something is good or bad or right or wrong based on its origins or its inherent traits and not based on the thing itself. In a way, it's saying that if a thing or an argument had genetics, its genetics would make it right or wrong and not the argument itself. Notice that saying something is good or right because of its origins is also still a fallacy. For example, that toy is horrible. It was made in New Jersey. I don't care what your argument is. I can't trust you because you're a Canadian. She makes convincing arguments, but she's a blonde. We all know that blondes are dumb. Yes, I am a blonde, and this is a tongue-in-cheek example. You may also hear this kind of reasoning in remarks that some folks would construe as racist. The same kind of reasoning may be okay if there is a logical reason attached to it. 
For example, if someone tries to sell you a bag of cookies from a bakery that you know the health department shut down because there were rats playing in the flour bin, that would be a good reason not to buy the cookies. In short, if you are making or listening to an argument that centers around the origins of a thing, person, or idea, make sure those origins are really relevant to the argument and are not just being used as a distraction. Let's review what we've talked about in this module. A fallacy of distraction is an argument that gets people to focus on something besides relevant facts. An appeal to authority attempts to prove an argument based on the perceived authority of the person who made it. The ad populum fallacy attempts to prove an argument based on popular opinion or following the crowd. An appeal to emotion tries to prove its point through feelings rather than appealing to the relevant facts. Many emotions could be appealed to. Some common ones are pity, fear, feelings of security, patriotism, and happiness. An appeal to tradition justifies doing a particular thing because we've always done it that way. The genetic fallacy claims that something is good or bad or right or wrong based on its origins or inherent traits and not based on the thing itself. Ready for your next quiz? Here it comes. We'll see you again in the next module.